say tantra, one has often heard the term tantric and uh, you know, and there's various kinds of things floating around about it. Can you just shed some light on <laughs> what essentially, is there something like a dark arts or what? Most of the existence is dark art. Light is only a small happening in this existence, isn't it? Isn't most of the existence dark? Yes. Light is a very small happening, a very limited happening. If light has to come, something has to burn. To have these lights going, something in this planet is burning right now. You must understand this, ecologically aware people. To have all these dots of light, something is burning somewhere. We say the bulb is burning, that is also burning, but something else is burning to keep this burning, isn't it? This is the way of the light. Whether it's the light bulb or the sun, something is burning. Whatever is burning is bound to get over someday. Yes? So that's why we say, if you're burning irresponsibly, we say, you're burning the candle from both the ends. Because we understand, if light has to come, something has to burn. So if you are burning to cause light, you better control the light and keep it at the minimum, otherwise things will burn up very soon. So light is a very limited happening. The whole cosmos is a dark art, no? So, there is a lot of dark art that one can practice, not necessarily life negative. Dark arts are not necessarily life negative. When we say occult, because you have heard of some lousy occultist who is trying to destroy somebody's lives, cause disease, cause death, because of that you think that occult is always a negative thing because socially you are exposed to only that kind of people. But occult is also of the highest order. Shiva is an occultist. Every guru is an occultist, okay? Right now I initiate you to Shambhavi, it's an occult. Otherwise how would it work? Occult means a certain capability. It's a certain technology. Right now I can pull out my cell phone and speak to somebody in another part of the world. This is a technology. Suppose without the cell phone, right now if I speak to somebody in United States just like this, this is occult. So technology is not very different from occult. You are using different kinds of material, but it's actually the same thing. When modern technology was not there, occult was extremely relevant. But today, occult's relevance is receding as modern technology progresses. See, now you came from Mumbai, Bombay, Mumbai. I'm getting it right in your head so that you don't get into trouble. <clears throat> Suppose a thousand years ago, you heard of Sadhguru in Coimbatore, your heart is longing, you want to go. But Mumbai to Coimbatore walking and coming, not a simple journey. If you venture, you don't know whether you'll again go back to Mumbai or not. You don't know what to expect on the way, you may never make it. So, you sit in Mumbai and, Oh Sadhguru, please reach out to me, I cannot come, please. Now if I felt like doing something to Athul, who's in Mumbai and incapable of coming to Coimbatore, then maybe I want to initiate him into Shambhavi in Mumbai. But Athul's mind runs all over the place. He sits down and he feels something, then he thinks, oh maybe I'm just imagining nonsense. His wife tells him, you're going crazy, man. Somebody that you've not seen is doing something to you, shut up and go back to work. He's beginning to feel something, but his logic, his reason, the family tells him, don't be stupid. And then what Sadhguru will do is, pick up a South Indian jasmine flower which cannot grow in Mumbai, 
and Atul is sitting like this, it fell into his hand. Now Atul, now he will sit ready for Shambhavi to be initiated. Because one jasmine flower was delivered. But today, I would rather call you and say, come, or send somebody with a brochure and say, come and get it here. Or if I want to send you a jasmine flower, I'll use DHL. So modern technology is making occult obsolete, but I want you to look back thousand years ago, just see the immense value of occult, yes? Thousand years ago, just imagine you were in Mumbai and I'm still in Coimbatore, you wanted something from me. Imagine the value of occult, isn't it? So, today the value has receded, so all kinds of charlatans are doing all kinds of nonsense. Occult need not necessarily mean negative. Now, the English word occult doesn't clearly specify what is it that they're calling as occult. Recently, someone asked me a question in the Samyama, I think. It seems some guru, he said, uh, Tantra is just a way of uh, uh, getting over what? Obsessions, just getting over obsessions. This is nonsense. We need to, uh, unfortunately, today, redefine the word Tantra because it's been distorted by people. First, let's understand this. The word Tantra means a technique or a technology. But because the Tantra that you're hearing of is a rebound from the American coast, you think Tantra means unbridled promiscuity. No, Tantra means extreme discipline. It's not <laughs> unbridled promiscuity, it's extreme discipline. Learning to use your body and your mind like you would use some other outside instrument. Like how you would use your computer or a screwdriver. Like that, you learn to use your body and your mind. It takes enormous discipline, not promiscuity, not looseness. Tantra is not things, the books they have written largely by Western authors, all kinds of things, no. Tantric texts are of extreme discipline, not of any kind of looseness. Because they're talking about the body, and right now the modern societies, if you say body, they're fixated about repro reproductive organs in the body and nothing else about the body. So if you say body, they're only thinking of a few body parts, they forgot the brain. <laughs> because they're only thinking a few body parts, they're thinking about sexuality and nothing beyond that. It is about learning to use the body like a phenomenal mechanism, and it is. If you do not know how to use it, what will you do here? If you do not know how to use your physical self and the energy behind it, what will you do? You will have no impact on anything. So this is tantra. Tantra means technology, tantra means a certain capability. There is no guru without a tantra. If he has no technology, he is not a guru. He can only be a gentle saint who will bless everybody, bless everybody, bless everybody. A blessing has no discretion. Now, if you were a thief, if you… if you met a saint, you would seek his blessing and he will bless you so that you could do your job well today because his blessing has no discretion. He cannot be because that's not in his control. Even the bandit tribes, you know, the Pindaris and people like that, they had their own gods and goddesses, they had their own saints. Their gods always guided them which home to hit today. Very successful they were. They pursued their profession for 
centuries, banditry is their profession. So unless you are just the gentle lily kind of si a saint who just blesses and blesses and blesses, I'm not trying to belittle that. They're beautiful in their own way, but they are not of any… they are not for people who are lusting for enlightenment, they are not for those people. They are only for people who are just seeking small improvements in their life. If you walk into your Home Depot, you can make some improvements to your life, isn't it? Yes or no? You can actually. I see every day on the television people come and say, Oh, I just bought this bed, my whole life has changed, it's amazing. I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know p some <laughs> a bed or a pillow could do that, I didn't know that <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> My whole life has changed completely. So if you walk into the Home Depot and walk out with something that you didn't have, you could uh, change your life a little bit. Life changing, the word life changing, how much of it changes subject to so many things. What has changed is subject to many things, isn't it? Suppose uh, you're cold right now, you didn't have a jacket like me, and you got one, it's life-changing right now, isn't it? Isn't it so? So is that what we're talking about? If that is so, it is fine, blessing and blessing and blessing. But if you're talking about spiritual growth, reaching to its… your ultimate nature, what is a guru without a capability? You can't call him a guru. So capability means a certain ability to do things which people cannot do for themselves. So if there is… I want this to be clear in your head, if there is no tantra, when I say tantra, if there's no technology, tantra is just a Sanskrit word for technology, not the way you have been psyched to believe. So if there is no tantra, there is no guru, really. Because guru means you have to roll up your sleeves and it's a mechanic's job. You got to fix things. To fix things you must know what's what. You must have some technology in your hand and that is tantra. Is there tantra in Isha? Very much, all across the board various kinds. But the significance of yoga is that it is not ritualistic. There are two dimensions of tantra. One is you use outside material and stuff to do things, which is ritualistic in nature. The yogic tantra is such that you use only your physical body and the energy system you don't need any other material. So these two loosely have been classified as right-hand path and left-hand path. Left-hand path use outside material, right-hand path does not use any material, just uses the body itself. Largely, this is yogic tantra, largely just what we do within ourselves. This is a tremendous gift that Agastyamuni offered that he established a tantric process, one hundred percent rooted in the body, nothing outside. Not one grain of rice or sand is being used to perform all the different dimensions of tantra, everything internalized within the system. This is his gift to us, this is one of the greatest things. In terms of human mechanism, this is one of the greatest things that's been ever offered to us from any source. This is his offering. 
have literally given me a complete definition and the problems and all the informations about it. Another thing that I always wanted to, this is a very common issue we all have, is something that um, can, um, I know uh, one should forgive easily. But forgive whom? <laughs> forgiveness, basically. I, it's, it's like a common issue. Um, but now, it's hard. Now, I, come on, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. See, right now, when do I have to forgive you? First thing is, I criminalize you for something. Then I'm trying to forgive you. Why this problem? I don't criminalize you, I just accept you the way you are. Where is the question of forgiveness? Yes. Yes. It's simply complicating life. But yeah, but when it comes to forgiveness, like when people No, but ask why is forgiveness needed? First of all, I must criminalize you, isn't it, yes. to forgive you. Yes. I don't criminalize you, you do what you want with your life. Why? Because that's what you know best right now. If you knew better, you would have done better. So you are doing what you know best. Why do I have to criminalize you in my mind and then forgive you? There is an unnecessary complication in life. I don't forgive anybody because I don't criminalize anybody. But it's hard when it comes to forgiveness, it's hard for, for humans basically, in general. So that's why I really want to… No, I'm saying know. forgiveness not needed. Not needed at all. First of all, when I don't accuse you of anything, where is the question of forgiving you? When I accept you the way you are, whatever you are. There's okay? no need of forgiveness. No, I, I don't care what you are, whatever you are, I'm okay with it. That's the way you are. That's how human beings are, all right? So people get into this thing because they have unrealistic expectations of… out of people. Because their expectations are unrealistic, they will criminalize somebody else in their mind. And then one day they will forgive them. Don't play God, live with nonsense. <laughs> Except people the way you are, you are not a perfect human being, so is nobody else around you. Accept them if you can transact with them, if you can deal with them, if you can do business with them, if you can have a relationship with them, fine. If you cannot, no, you leave them alone. Wish everyone could think like you, Sadhguruji. That's why it, that makes you very different and we seek for helps and we seek no, for No, I'm things. saying you're unnecessarily creating a complication in your mind and struggle with it forever. Because once you criminalize somebody in your mind, how much ever forgiving uh, acting you do, it's not going to be cleared in your mind. True. <laughs> True. Thank you so much for this. And another thing that I wanted to always find out or figure out, uh, something to do with spirituality. Is there any way or a certain path that you can follow to become um, or to have uh, an awareness of what is a way, what is a path towards uh, spirituality if someone is trying to look for it? See, spirituality is not an ideology of some kind. It is not a set of moralities. Nor is it going to the temple, church or mosque. Spiritual process means this. This body, you accumulate it over a period of time. You are not born like this, that's what I'm saying. You slowly accumulated. From where? From the food that we eat, all right? Whatever we accumulate, we can claim it's ours. We can, if when we say it is me, it's stupid, isn't it? It's like saying my… these clothes are me, these clothes are mine is okay. These clothes are me is madness, isn't it? So this body is mine is okay. This… this is me is madness. So if you understand you have accumulated the body, you also understand all the content of the mind you have accumulated. So what you see as your psychological stuff you have accumulated, your physiological stuff you have accumulated. But what is you? That's not it coming to experience. When that comes into experience, we call it your a spiritual process. I find that bit a little hard, personally when it comes to me, because I've tried a lot of things. We all on a day-to-day -day That's a whole problem maybe, you're trying a lot of things. <laughs> this is like, uh, <laughs> see, if you, wa if you want to strike water in this land, you must dig in one place. If you're digging in ten different places every two days, you dig in a different place, you will have a lot of holes. 
but you won't have water. True. But I, a lot of people have advised me, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting there, you have to get into doing meditations and stuff like that. I somehow subconsciously, um, when, even when I try, you know, being part of it, it somehow doesn't bring me into that space of what I'm looking for, <laughs> you know. So I must, really uh, have… You must come and do some inner engineering. That's what I wanted to. I, I was coming to that. I really want to do an inner engineering uh, with with you, um, where I can figure out what the cause is, uh, what what I'm actually trying to. See, do it's for. just this: if your body and your mind was taking instructions from you right now, would you keep this healthy and well? Your body was taking instructions. If your mind was taking instructions. Would you keep it blissful and joyful? That's all. You don't know where the… you have a supercomputer but you don't know where the keyboard is. This is why inner engineering needed, you must find the keyboard, then you will type out what you want. I'm surely going to find <laughs> it very soon. <laughs> Thank you, Sankuru. Thank you. One question I'd like to share that we need people you meant to meet or is it a destiny, luck or fate? Have you just fallen in love with someone? <laughs> huh? <laughs> no, no, because I don't want to disturb the romance. <laughs> See, look at it this way. Since you woke up today morning, till this moment, let's leave the sleeping time. Since you came awake fully, from that moment to this moment, your body has been doing its things, isn't it so? Physical activity is happening, both outwardly and inwardly. Happening or no? That's why we're alive, it's happening. Mental activity has been happening, emotional activity is happening, energy activity is happening. How much of these four dimensions of activity did you perform consciously from the moment you came away till now? How much do you think? What percentage? What percentage? Well, below one percent, believe me. When you perform activity consciously, less than one percent, over ninety-nine percent is unconscious. Everything will look accidental, isn't it? Hmm? Everything looks like divine intervention because Ninety-nine percent of the time, you're unconscious. Do one thing. When you drive today to wherever you drive, ninety-nine percent of the time, close your eyes and drive. You will see how many people you will meet <laughs> But if you drive with your eyes open, fully conscious, you're not going to meet anybody like this at the bank. Hmm? Things will happen in a completely different way. How conscious we are will determine how much of your destiny you determine. How unconscious you are determines how much of your destiny is accidental. Everything that's accidental, we want to attribute it to some other force elsewhere. Now this must stop. We must understand. It is we. Is there no other force? Of course, you didn't make the creation nor did I, all right? You did not create this creation nor did I create this creation, there is. But that is a different dimension altogether. And what is happening with you right now is entirely your making. From where you come from in India, is the only culture on the planet which constantly told you, your life is your karma. Karma means you're doing. Your life is your making. Whatever may be happening, you may be able to logically figure out why it is so, you may not be able to figure out, but still you know one thing, if this is happening to me, this is my making. This is the greatest empowerment you can have when you understand my life is my making. Whatever happened till now, it doesn't matter. How will you make your tomorrow? 
I'm asking you. If you clearly, clearly know one hundred percent, my life is my making, how will you make the next moment, how will you make a tomorrow, how will you make your future in the most beautiful way, isn't it so? That's what needs to happen.